Appreciate it. Hi, sir. Chris Strickland. Nice Chris? to meet you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a great show. Sir, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, sir. Chris Callahan. Chris, appreciate it. Nice really to meet great you. job. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, really, really super. Jerry Lance here. Nice meeting you. Hi, sir. Chris Callahan. Nice meeting you. Great to meet you. Hi, sir. Chris Callahan. Thank you. There, we need a picture for his website. Yeah. All right. Push it up where a thousand feet, push it up to about 500 miles an hour, and basically pull the stick back and you go straight up in the air. He hit, he crashed. Kathy Sterico caught it all on tape. She was rolling on her home video camera during the fiery crash. Just quiet, quiet. Nobody, it was just like, nobody was saying anything. It was just really quiet. Kathy's family was with her, watching the Thunderbird show from the tarmac. Her sister, Linda Johnson, says the accident was hard to watch. It's just like he hit the ground, fire, and I saw this parachute come out of the back of it, and I was hoping that was him. Tom Book was in the front row. He says the crowd couldn't believe what had happened. It was silence. It was silence. Nobody was crying. And Following the accident, the crowd was told the show was over and people were told to leave the tarmac. It was just, you know, just in dismay. I mean, most people just stood and talked, you know, like, oh my gosh, did you see that? I mean, it was, it was horrible. It's, it's really a, a, a very in-depth look from a safety perspective aimed at uh, getting to root causes and then uh, in, a, in, a, um, in a very restricted way to, to then identify ways of, uh, of, hap of avoiding these in the future.
whatever the cause that we find out, uh, what we do know is that the safety buffer that we put into this thing worked for us. It was clear cut. There's convincing evidence that he just didn't get enough altitude. The video was described as unforgettable. A pilot ejecting and a plane bursting into a ball of fire. It's just a chance as to whether all the bad factors come together at the same time. In this case, they all came together and we have a crash. The factors are scripted out in the Accident Investigation Board report. The biggest problem, according to the Air Force, was altitude. For the normal performance of a split S, he could have only needed another couple of hundred feet. That, according to Ike Sweezy, a former pilot himself. Investigators say the pilot misjudged it by 1,000 feet. He was used to practicing it 1,000 feet different. So those numbers were in the back of his mind. In the report, it states the flight lead communicated right before takeoff Quote, we're back at Nellis altitude. Investigators say that made Captain Strickland think of his training in Nevada, where the elevation is lower. For a split second there, it appears he reverted back to his Nellis habit pattern. He was kind of led into it by what his flight lead said, but the flight lead was not discussing that, oh, the altitudes are all the same. It was the aircraft performance. But there is more. According to the report, Strickland didn't have enough fuel during his training to practice the move at Mountain Home and satellite photos were wrong. Therefore, the Thunderbirds had to change visual reference points right before flight. The size of the pilot air mm -hmm. was bigger than the margin of air in the maneuvers design. We now know exact measurements. The plane was falling at about 90 miles per hour. Captain Chris Strickland ejected 140 feet above the ground, less than a second before impact. Uh, the fact that he stayed with the aircraft and made every attempt to recover it, and then when he saw it was not recoverable, made a decision to eject 